the show is Africa Daily on Africa Global Radio. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be airing an early interview we had with um, Zaina Balema, a rugby player who is using her platform to advocate for development and empower girls globally. So, yeah, listen up. We would be right back. Stay. Tell me, what is it like to be a professional um, rugby player? Mm. Actually, I'm on the journey to become a professional. At the moment, I'm an amateur rugby player. And uh, actually, if you see, you can't see because it's radio, but... Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have it, yeah, I had this image um, of me. This is my vision to one day be the first black Muslim woman to play for England. Okay, um, right. And that is the dream. That is the journey I'm on back on right now. Um, so it's my my journey to become professional. And for me, it's, it's bigger than me. Obviously, um, I want this journey to inspire as much people as I can. So like right. you mentioned, when you introduced me to the mothers, mm. the people with careers, mm. you know, the people, the black community, the Muslim community, the women, like everybody that can relate to me in some way, shape or form, I want them to be inspired by this journey mm. and for them to look within themselves and feel like, you know what, if I can... If Z, you know, if Zainab is following her dreams, then maybe I can follow my dreams too. Right. Now, you take so many boxes for me, and I believe um, others who've been following you, especially those who really have passion for the rugby sports, you ha- you, you're, you're a mother, um, you're a nurse, you know, yeah. and you're a Muslim, you know, uh, you know how issues are with, with uh, being a Muslim, sometimes a bit, you know, rough out there. How do you manage to, to, to kick, you know, uh, so many walls? How do you manage all of these, you know, collections of, of, of professionalism in your life? How, how do you manage? Well, the thing is, it's passion. You know, I think if you have passion, passion for something, mm. you will find a way to do it. And for me, rugby is my relief. So, yes, I get stressed out when I'm working for the NHS, for the National Health Service. I'm a mother of three young kids. My oldest uh, child is four years old. So I've got four-year-olds, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. So that comes with its stresses. And also, I'm a wife. So there's a lot of things in my life that comes with stresses. And for me, rugby is what balances everything out. Because I may have a bad day at work, but I know later on I've got rugby training where I can release all my stress, all the frustration, all the tension, mm. and it keeps me going. So it's it's more about rugby being, uh, you know, what... I need to to manage all the other aspects of my life. Amazing. Rather than a bird. Exactly. In as much as it's stressful for you, you 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 convert that into something you love, right? I'm amazing. I love that. I think I've, I've just gotten a bit of an inspiration from you. Maybe I, it's, it could be applicable to some of my, you know, <laughs> activities I may see as a, as a burden. But before, before I get to my next question, you recently uh, won the Vitality Grassroots of the Year 2020, uh, the Sportswomen of the Year Awards. Okay. Definitely, it, it spells out that you have come a long way you've uh broken walls broken barriers and then being able to be awarded it means you've actually made an impact something spectacular what's what's the winning formula um there's no winning formula to do really yeah the main thing is that i would always advise people is to be yourself Okay. I think in society, we have pressures to try and be like someone else, to try and not be who you are. Mm-hmm. But my, I think what makes my journey and who I am special is that I try to be as, as authentic as I can. I don't try to copy anyone else. I stay true to who I am, true to my values. Right. And doing that, you can inspire a lot of people. And um, growing up, uh, playing rugby, going to university, playing rugby, I faced a lot of struggles being a Muslim woman, you know, with alcohol, um, not drinking alcohol, being in a team where, you know, a cult- rugby culture is very alcohol uh, driven. So being in that culture as young Muslim women, looking different on the pitch, wearing my hijab, being the only black girl on the pitch as well was very difficult for me um, in my uni days. So all of that um, contributes to my story. But actually now, this is my superpower. This is what sets me apart from everybody else because I come on the pitch, I look different. Yeah. Fine, I embrace that. I come on the pitch, I've got my hijab, I embrace that. I, you know, I have a different lifestyle to other people on my team, but 
that is what empowers me. And for me, I would like to call it my superpower. It's not okay. It, 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 you know, I stand out, but I like to put a positive spin on it. Sometimes it's good to stand out. You know, you don't yeah. have to blend in with the crowd. Not at all. Yeah. Mm. So, so what advice would you give to girls out there before we get to our next conversation? I mean, clearly there are girls, young girls out there, potential sportswomen out there who are also facing similar challenges. Because I believe the first time you came onto the pitch with a hijabi on, you, you got questioned. You, you had to answer a couple of questions. Why this? Why that? And it went on and on and gone until you actually proved yourself that it's not about the identity. It's about what I can bring to the table. What would you tell young girls growing up out there? Yeah, I didn't actually ever really get questioned about the hijab. People just looked at me and be thinking, oh, she looks different, you know. Okay, okay. I think there's a lot of things going on. Going in their minds, right. In their minds, yeah. And But actually, within the laws of rugby, it's permissible for you to wear the hijab in place. So I was not breaking any rules at any point during my time wearing hijab playing rugby. Mm. Um, but actually, um, I read a story about this young lady um, from Ghana. I think her name was Anatu, and she's, uh, she was playing football in the northern part of Ghana with a hijab. And I think it was the first time sort of her going out there in a hijab, and people were asking her loads of questions, like, why, why this, is she okay? And I just read her story, like, a, about a week ago, and I I found it so inspiring that right. a young girl living in Ghana with all the social, you know, cultural restraints and the issues, she was brave enough and courageous enough to go out there and compete in her job while playing football. So I've never met her before. But I wish to see one day, inshallah, if I come to Ghana, I'd love to meet her. And I think she, she's doing the right thing, but she, she should keep on going. So I think from that story, that what I would advise people is, is to be brave. Okay. And I think it's the, the bravest thing to do is to be yourself. Right. And, um, that goes without saying. So I think be brave, be yourself, who you are, and challenges will come. Mm -hmm. and, and it's about how you overcome these challenges, and you'll be a better person, and you'll inspire a lot of people at the end of it. So, so keep on going, regardless of any barriers that you may face, because at the end, it will be worth it. Right. Amazing. It will be worth it. Now, let's talk about uh, sports, um, using sports as a tool for development. Now, marking the International Day of Sports for Development and Peace, we'll be having conversations uh, on how impacting uh, it can be using sports as a tool to promote development. You've launched a project in, in Ghana and in Morocco uh, for this very same reason. Uh, but as a British Ghanaian, Based in the UK, tell me what you've learned about um, rugby in 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 Ghana, Morocco, generally Africa mm -hmm. as a whole. Yes. So it's, I've been blown away to be honest with you because I wasn't actually sure if rugby was uh, played in Ghana. I, after doing some research, I found that it was done, and um, actually Herbert Mensah, who's the president of Ghana mm -hmm. rugby, um, uh, who I speak to uh, on occasions, um, obviously he's who. You know, he's lived in the UK before, he's lived in Ghana, he's part of the, the rugby organisation in Ghana. So that connection was there. I met a young lady, Rafa Tunisa, who looked exactly like me, a Muslim Zongo girl. Right. <laughs> from, from, you know, promoting rugby and enjoying rugby. And I was blown away you mm. know, by that. And uh, um, I think when I went to Ghana, uh, I went to go and see what, rugby's like in Ghana and I, I met young kids running with the rugby ball having fun showing their passion yeah. and rugby it comes with values you know respect, discipline sportsmanship um, a lot of these values can do wonders to a young child growing up uh, installing these values in them they can go on to use them in other aspects of their life maybe growing up education yeah. wife looking for a job even just socialising you know sports can give you so much and going out to Ghana and seeing these young kids absolutely enjoying rugby, it, it warms my heart. And um, so the project Buzzle and is basically aimed to use rugby as a tool to have a positive uh, impact on young people's lives, it's women and children especially. Okay. And so I did a fundraiser, I gathered boots, uh, rugby equipment, everything that you need to play rugby. Right. Uh, I shipped it over to Ghana. A lot of people donated from my, my rugby clubs in the UK. I'm right. Going to Ghana. Um, I met the kids, we gave them some new pairs of food because some of these kids were playing rugby with no footwear or in sandals and not mm, Not the appropriate to wear, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, to give them the opportunity mm. to 
to play rugby with the right resources and it was so heartwarming it was a beautiful experience and uh, this is what I want to do I want to use my passion of rugby to change people's lives amazing tell us uh, more about this project of yours um, studs in muds and how effective it has been uh, in empowering girls first of all tell us about the project yeah, so it's literally the project I was just talking about. This is what it does. It uses sports to change people's lives. But uh, I launched it in Ghana, but I also got the opportunity to go to Morocco, which was really nice. And I met the young girls out there playing and training in rugby. And uh, Morocco, they face their own challenges, you know, being female, uh, playing rugby in a culture where they don't really uh, acknowledge that female should be playing much sport, you know, rather to be in the kitchen and, you know, doing household chores. Yeah. Um, so it was very empowering going to Morocco um, with a lot of Muslims as well. You know, I usually in the UK I'm the only Muslim on my on my team, but I went to Morocco and I was just surrounded by yeah. Yeah. Very hot. You you can relate, yeah. Mhm. Mm exactly, I could relate, and uh, it was just a like, nice experience. And um, the girls out there absolutely doing what they can to to play the sport that they love, regardless of the. The, the barriers that they face within society and within their culture. Right. It's, it was really nice to go out there, yeah. Mm. Now, uh, f from the time, 2018, I believe, you launched this uh, project of yours. And April, I believe this marks... Uh, a milestone for you, the same month of April, I believe. So 2018, yeah, exactly. so, so how many years so far? We're looking at uh, five years? Um, about three years. Three years, 2018. Okay, three years, yeah, my bad. So, uh, has there been any improvement in terms of how girls are faring with respect to the sports in Africa, Ghana? Uh, I think, um, I don't, I would love to go in you know, back and forth to Ghana more than mm. I usually do, just to really see the impact that right. my project and I guess other projects are doing. Um, this year, actually, what I want to do is do a seven tournament. So it's uh, it's rugby, uh, but seven aside, and I want to do it for the young women. Last time I went predominantly for the children, but this time I want to go for the women. And I think sport has the power to to really bring about social change, to bring people together from different communities. To, to learn of each other, to socialise, and it's good for mental and physical health. Right. So I think those are the main things that I think sport can give to young people. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to do with, with my project. Super. We've been talking about sports and how powerful a tool it is. Tell us about it uh, from your own experience, the power of sports. Sport is, is uh, I can't, you know, I can't express how powerful sport is. Mm. Sports can really, really make good of of a not so good situation if you like. And it can bring in it, it just goes back to character skills then. So a young girl growing up, uh, for me I was very timid, very shy. Uh since picking up the rugby ball I've become more confident within myself, within my identity. I kind of feel as if rugby is giving me a sense of identity and giving me a, a purpose in life. So Although I'm Muslim, although I'm a woman, although, you know, I'm African, I feel like rugby has given me my general purpose. So using that passion to change people's lives, I feel like it's my purpose in life. So, and that is a sport. So sport can give you so much. And and I, I just wish it's accessible to everybody. Um, I know a lot of young people probably don't get access to to uh, certain sports such as rugby, especially in the UK, rugby is yeah. a white, predominantly white, middle class, upper class sport, private uh, school boy sport. And I think part of what I'm doing is trying to change that narrative and, and smash those stereotypes that people like me, people from ethnic minorities, people from low socioeconomic backgrounds, can actually pick up a rugby ball and enjoy the game. So that's right. part of the work that I'm doing as well. Right. I'm all vocal about that and just Right, but before I wrap up, um, I just want to find out what has happened to your nursing profession. Clearly, it's one of those important professions that we need in, in, in this world regarding uh, health and all of that. Have you kept that uh, idle for a while or you plan to go back to that space or you decide to blend the two? Nursing has always been a big part of my life, um, especially as a neonatal nursing. I was born early. I was mostly born in May and I was born in January. So I was born prematurely and that's where my passion oh. came from nursing. So I knew from a very young age I wanted to grow up and be a nurse. That was right. from the get go. So being able to now be a neonatal nurse and look after people 
you know, I wanted to give back to those that kept me alive, basically, and that's what I'm doing now. Mm. Um, in terms of nursing in general, I think at the moment it's going to be uh, of course, just because I have uh, the desire to play for England, it's going to come with a lot of work and uh, I think the most sensible thing to do now is just to put my nursing on a pause so I can focus on my rugby career. Right. And nursing is such that I can always go back. I've got mm-hmm. to be under my belt. I can always go back to nursing at any point, at any time. Mm. So it's, I'm just following, following my dreams at the moment. And if I need to go back to nursing, then it, when the time is right, I will do. But for now, I just want to follow my dreams. Right. So yeah, clearly it doesn't matter uh, what profession that you have. It is is just about thinking about going back to it some time to come, but not totally forgetting about it. I like the fact that you go back to it and then you know continue practicing it as it is part of your passion as well. Now, why why do you think? Lastly, sports can be a, a transformational force. Why can sports be be, be that? I think. Um Sport, as again, has, it has the power to really bring about goodness in people. Mm. Um, going back to the values, um, as I talked about rugby, has values such as sportsmanship, respect, discipline. Yeah. And um, these values can really change uh, the mindset. I mean, it gives you resilience, especially being a rugby player. You, you feel like going to war for 80 minutes. You're, you're literally fighting with your body. Oh, yeah. The line right. For your team to, to win the game. And that in itself, it's like life. Life comes with struggles and you have to be resilient. You have to try and overcome them. To overcome them. I, yeah, so sport, I believe, can teach you a lot of life lessons. Mm. And um, it's just, the, I think it's just, I just recommend anyone who has a, a young girl, young boy, children in general, or them themselves, yeah. go out and play sport. It can do so much, not just for physical health, but also mental health. Mental health. And especially within our... Also, within our, our community, mm. there's a lot of things, you know, high blood pressure, cholesterol, um, diabetes, and sport can help combat those um, illnesses. So I definitely recommend a lot of people, especially within our African community, to right. some sort of sport. Right. Amazing. I, I like the fact that you just uh, inculcated your expertise in it. Uh, cholesterol. Exactly. Th- th- that's the power. I love that. And I, I must say, thank you very much for, uh, I mean, granting us this interview. It has really gone a long way to impact myself because I need to look for, you know, the passion to be able to engage in other activities that I really love to. But thank you very much. We really appreciate you. And uh, hopefully we would engage you. Maybe your next, you know, visit to Ghana we may have you right here in the studio so we can have that one-on-one you know uh, physical I- interview so we can talk more about how to develop sports uh, how to develop uh, the young girl how to empower you know uh, our women out there especially women wearing hijabi in sports and other you know uh, the the spaces of uh, professional activities as well i really appreciate you uh, zainab alema i hope i mentioned that name correctly i really like the, the last name alema w- w- want to tell me uh, is, is it uh, is it tell me about it Alema, I love it. Alema, 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 so it's Gam. My dad is Gam. Oh, okay. Yeah, from Osu, so it's the Gam name. Okay, so you speak Gam. O- 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 part of, we're part, part of royalty, yeah. Oh, 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 you, so you speak Gam? Um, not that much. Not that much. So what can you say? What can you say to your people, the, your people in Accra? Osu people? <laughs> um, I can say, what can I say in Gam? Not much. I can speak Hausa though. Hausa, you can speak Hausa. I can speak Hausa, yeah. Okay. Can I do Hausa so cycle? Okay. So for for the ma for the ma Hausa, one more chicken Ghana, West Africa, Nigeria. I mean, in the sub-Saharan Africa, the for the most one abu. Yes, so she will wrap up. Ah, kuzo kubuga rugby. Amazing. Short, simple and precise. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very interesting, I must say. I, I, I nearly spoke ga, gave myself out. <laughs> but that was uh, Zainab Alema, uh, an early interview we had with her all the way uh, from the UK, Ghanaian British um, rugby player into sports for development using her tool, her platform, rugby. And uh, of course, with her foundation, Studs in Mud, which she actually established in 2018 in Ghana here. And of course, uh, went all the way to Morocco to also uh, empower young women who are into uh, rugby playing. And also those who also use the hijabi in their own uh, day-to-day activities. So she's a mother, 
a nurse as well, you know. It's like a lot of things going on in her space. She's also uh, an award winner. Uh, last year, 2020, she won the uh, Vitality Grassroots um, Sportswoman of the Year. Very inspirational. Let me bring in my colleagues so they can also take the... Uh, have their own take on uh, the interview that we had. Let me start with Hafiz. Hafiz. Barry. Yeah. Zainab was, was, was on fire, yeah? Yeah, the last part of your interview. Yeah, the Hausa part. I was yeah. shocked when she said Kuzoku Bugar. I, mean, I was surprised, yeah, man. I was exposing her because eh? you, you almost tried Gan. I, I almost tried. I was at Oyo Gan. <laughs> I almost said that. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good thing she, she said she could speak Hausa. Yeah. I think that's your, more your domain. I know, right? It brought me home. <laughs> Safe. Yeah, so sports for development and uh, rugby and the involvement of women, not just any other woman, but the woman who's a Muslim, who's a nurse, who's a mother, yeah. who's wearing hijabi, you know. So there's a lot of dynamics with uh, her persona. Ah, uh, well, let me start with rugby. Mm. I mean, <laughs> when you mention rugby in Africa, right? You, you immediately think Springbok. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yes, that's even when you are in the sporting space. Yeah. Uh, you immediately think Springboks. I mean, who wouldn't? Mm -hmm. I mean, they are the most successful, uh, uh, you know, country when it comes to rugby. Right. Uh, on the continent. And uh, the Springboks mm -hmm. of South Africa are yeah. a huge part of it. Yeah. Uh, usually, the green and gold. I know, and right? Yeah. And, and the white shots. Yes. The, so the built, built physique guys on, on the on the pitch the world. and all of that yeah exactly but when you talk, when you when you mention rugby mm. here in our home base ghana i mean we've unfortunately categorized it into one part we term as you know not so flattering time we say yeah uh, it's part of the lesser known sports mm. we tend to call them right and uh well because well here it is all about football yes so but then with her i, I understand or what should i say i for her with and what she's doing, I think what she's trying to do and is doing, mm. I think uh, it, it's commendable because one, she's Muslim, mm -hmm. she's a woman, mm -hmm. and she's black. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're everything minority. Oh, yeah. Yes, and uh, the odds are stacked against you from the get-go. So, I mean, you, you have to deal with a lot. A lot. Now, even in these parts, uh, I remember growing up and watching a football coach, uh, a man, a guy that was trying to put together a female team. It wasn't easy. They gave him one hell of a time. I mean, one, you would find the ladies come to train in the morning and you have their parents walk to the pitch and then drag them by the hair mm. to go home and do the chores. Yeah. Because they're like, your dad is not going to do it. Your brother is not going to do it. Mm. Who do you expect to do it? So he constantly had trouble trying to mobilize these ladies to, 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 to engage in sports and activity. But eventually they got around it. I think they came up with uh, a strategy where they would... Uh, give them something mm -hmm. at the end of the month, just a stipend, more or less, uh, uh, so that when they come home, mm -hmm. uh, the, the parents feel like, well, they went away and it was well, rewarded. It was rewarding, yes, something, yeah. Yes, something you didn't come home yeah. empty-handed. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's quite challenging when you try to, you know, uh, blend the two. Thankfully, she's been able to do that successfully. We're talking rugby and nursing. Mm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, sporting personalities try this and fail, but... Uh, and she has even had the choice of having to put nursing on pause. Oh, so yeah. To, put to it, focus on, yeah, to focus the, on, on, mm -hmm, on, on, on rugby. Yeah. Yes. And speaking about, you know, rocking that unique look uh, in terms of participating in sports, of mm. course, uh, she made mention of Anatu Sadat. Yes. Yeah. The first young lady to, you know, rock the hijab in a football game. Mm. And I think she plays for Northern Ladies. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the game against Ampim uh, This was a girl that, that put on the hijab and it went viral. Right. Playing. Yes, because, and even in her narration, she was saying, look, it wasn't like something she planned. She woke up and one day she had one thing, audacity. That's yeah. What she had. <laughs> yeah. So, and when she decided to rock it, I mean, even her friends that were Muslims on the team were asking her. Why would you do she that? She was asking her why, is something wrong? Some even thought she had a problem with her head, something. Yeah. But she was like, no, I just felt in my element, so I decided mm -hmm. to put it. And... And it's interesting, she's mentioned her, and uh, she's one of the personalities she would like to see yeah. uh, when she makes the trip down here. So, all in all, I, I think uh, uh, she, she's, uh, she's, she's definitely someone uh, every young lady would, would, want, to look would, up would to. want to look up to. Absolutely. Especially in, that, in the sports that she is in. And when you talk about rugby, I mean, it, it's not like you would need something expensive or expensive gear to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, mm -hmm. to play in. It's, it's, how do I put it? It's almost like football. Yeah. Yes, it has a lot of similarities with mm -hmm, football mm -hmm. because I mean we are talking about 
in football, you see the first half is 45 minutes. In rugby, we are talking 40 minutes. Mm. 40 Almost the half. same. Yes. Mm. Uh, in Just foot- 10 minutes difference, yes. yeah? Yes. And in football also, uh, we are talking what? 11 players. Mm-hmm. In rugby, we are talking 15 players. Okay. Yes. And the one difference, I think, even with footballers in their gear, okay. the one thing they rock besides the jersey and the boots, they put on the shin guards. Yeah, yes. to protect the... Yeah. The sh- the yeah. Shin. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, in rugby, I think it's the mouth guards. Because the contact sports. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. You'd have to pull down your opponent. And yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. And interesting enough, you, you talked about the build. Now, yeah, the physique. I, I'm huh? so glad she mentioned it because people assume that... You to, need to, to be to well be built. Part, exactly. Yeah. You need to have a certain look. Physique. But when yeah. I watched her, she's just like, you know... Yes, mommy, she's, she's, she's been she's, she's referred to as so, the bulldozer, though. Yeah. I, I don't know because of the... The, yeah, she's she her, her, her it phys- means strength. I mean, yes, she's right. Strong. Mm-hmm. But you see, in 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 rugby, the little I know about it, I mean, we have the forwards and the linebackers. Okay, and the forwards are usually the built the built ones, ones yeah. Yes. And and for those to be able to resist the exactly. other guys yes, from exactly. yeah penetrate. Uh-huh. So the ones at the back are usually the fast ones. So you could be as tiny with, as with speed, yes. Yes, you can as, as tiny as Epifania. Yeah. Very good example. Yes. Thank but you. You need to be able to to run very, very fast. fast. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, and yeah, they need to get the exactly, and and these guys that are built, they usually protect protect the, them. The one that yes. the ball and everything. Yeah, it's an interesting game Very. to look at it, and mm. it teaches you a lot. Yeah, she mentioned how it has even impacted in her. Uh, she growing up, she was a shy yeah. type. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think she came out of a shell mm-hmm. after you know engaging in in, mm. in this sport. All in all, uh, you can say uh, it 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 brought out a lot. Yeah, her, yeah. Know. Very. Okay, that was half as good. Thank you very much. We're talking sports for development uh, and it has to do with uh, an interview that we had earlier with Zainab Alema, Ghanaian British award winning rugby player, using her platform to advocate for development. Of course, make it happen by empowering women and her foundation uh, studs in muds. Let me get to Epi so she can also uh, give us her take. You yeah. You literally called me tiny. Really? Who did that? And you said perfect example. Oh, really? I did that? I'm sorry. I am sorry. I, my bad. I didn't notice it. What was he said to We me? will talk about that as well. Uh, okay, Epiphania. Don't worry. Tell us. We will talk about that. Yeah. I think a few things I took away from what she said, what uh-huh. Zainab actually said, had to do with um, social change, uh, looking at development, mm. uh, passion. The key thing is to identify where your passion lies right. and then to actually work hard on it. Now, if she didn't have a passion for the game, she wouldn't have been able to stay in it. Mm. Despite all the criticisms, everything that has come her way, uh-huh. it's the passion and the zeal that has kept her going through no, okay. and actually seen her through to actually achieve this. Right. She didn't just left the fact, leave the fact that, okay, I have a passion for this. I'm doing it. I'm attaining a couple of goals, you know, getting some awards here and there. But she actually channeled that impact she's having into social change. Okay. Uh, creating something that can impact the lives of other people mm. who she hopes to be able to bring up to the ladder yeah. where she is. As she has always climbed in higher. And it's not just about the power you have. It's about the impact you make in people's lives. Right. The impact actually what leads people to come and talk about the power you have. Because if she wasn't doing something amazing, yes, we'll recognize her as one of the people. Her name Mugodo, she's one of the women... Uh, but then she's changing these lives she's actually impacting, these people she's having an effect on would all come up and do great things and it would all be rooted back to her. So I believe when you identify your passion, don't just let it be that. Follow through it. Despite the odds, despite the things that will come at you, once you believe in what you're doing yourself, don't listen to what anybody has to say. And okay. you're bound to face challenges. Right. And find a way to actually lift somebody else up through what you're doing. Okay, thank you, Epi. Uh, let me hear, Mummy. Uh, you okay? He called me tiny. He did you? Why you keep? Why do you keep calling people tiny? Why? Wait, first of all, why do you keep causing trouble? And you kept saying perfect example. I did. I uh, my bad. I didn't know I say that. Okay, but, but before Afi, just hold on to that. Maybe that thoughts of yours. Moving away from yeah. that, I mm-hmm. mean, Epi has talked about social change and how right. she's socially impacting the lives of young girls here in Abbey's Ghana. Mm-hmm. What I took away from the interview and before that, the mm-hmm. interview was a really interesting one. It was. I listened to it before the show and I kept smiling throughout. Oh, I was like, right. oh, that's that's a nice conversation. Well, it was. It was. I, mean, I enjoyed it. So mm-hmm. what I took away from the whole interview, the whole conversation yeah. was she talked about being brave by ourselves. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's like um, she's talking about challenges coming mm-hmm. and how you can overcome these challenges by inspiring yourself right. and telling yourself that no matter what comes my way, once I'm able to go through it, I'm able to come out a winner, I'm, I'm able to come out a success, you realize in the end that it is all worth it. Absolutely. And then we talk, and then um, but to the part where you asked how she thinks so, um, sports is impacting society, mm-hmm. she talked about how sports has the power to bring people together. I mean, let's use the Didier Drogba example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where he, he actually... Um, knelt down with the other to players the knee yeah, to and then to, 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 to bring about peace. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that's a great example. Mm-hmm. And then she talked about how certain values in sports mm-hmm. can change mindsets. I mean, she talked about how, um, let's say, playing rugby, playing or football, mm. you have to struggle to be able to, to, to make the ball enter mm-hmm. the net of your opponent. Sometimes it's not easy because you have to go through a whole Struggled. lot of players. Especially you when have to you, go through you defenders a and, defender. and all of that. Right. So it's, it, it teaches young ladies. So it Some teaches kind like, of lesson, yeah? It teaches that, I mean, life, life is less, tough. Yeah. But once you're able to pull through, once you're able to fight, break through these you walls, make uh? through in nice. you, you you make it in the end. Nice. And then she also talked about how sports is a way to take care of our physical health mm-hmm. and our mental health as well. Right. Because sometimes some people have so much built up stress. So stressed, yeah. It's like they go out to play football, mm. they hang out with friends, right. and then they come back home and then they are relieved. It eases you. Yeah. Sometimes you're so angry, mm-hmm. you, you, you want to smash something. But you go out, you take go a run. Score, go and score goals. <laughs> this is better. You go out, you take a run, mm-hmm. and then before you know it, you're, you're feeling you're better. Go, yeah. And I was watching um, this series, and then this guy was really, really angry about something that happened in mm. the office. And one of his friends was like, you know what, I'm taking you bowling. Okay. And he had never bowled in his life. Right. So he goes there and then he he tries to he tries to bowl one or two, three times. It doesn't work. Then his friend talks to him about how about you think about the thing that made you angry? How about you channel your rage uh-huh. into the whatever it is you're doing? The bowling and will he suffer. was able to play a perfect game. The bowling will suffer. <laughs> so I believe um it's 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 yeah, great it's, 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 it's a good great thing, yeah. how mm. sports can help us yeah. take care of our physical health mm-hmm. as well as our mental health right. as well. Thank you very much uh, Maud. Uh, I wish we had more time to speak. <laughs>